Welcome back to Teresa's Deaf. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. And if you're new here, welcome. I have an awful garbage mouth. And if you're not into that or weird shit in general, then this is not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul, but I'll remember our time fondly. If you want to jump straight to the overall review of the products, I'll leave a time code down below. Feel free to jump ahead. So the other day I was on the train. <laughs> And I would say that I was having a really good commute. I had no problems. I got on my first train. I was just like zoning out, listening to music, living my best life. Everything was fine, right? I go to my next train, which is the second train that I take in order to get to my job. This is pretty much a fucking cattle car at this point. This is just like a weird thing about me, but I have a tendency of looking at other people's phones, okay? I know it's nosy. I understand that. I'm a nosy fucking bitch. I get it. But the point is, is that I can't help it. <laughs> And anytime I see somebody that's near me that's on the phone, I just look whatever's on their screen, right? Most of the times it's usually movies and that's how I watch a lot of movies. It's usually over the shoulder of somebody else. I have no idea what's going on, but at least I can see something. So I get into the train and I'm smushed up against this woman. She had to be like, I wanna say like mid to late forties or whatever. So this lady next to me on a Wednesday fucking morning, okay? Was just thumbing through dick pics. Like just thumbing through multiple dick pics. She didn't have a privacy screen on her phone and the fucking brightness had to be up to a thousand. Basically people in other boroughs could see that she was looking at dick pics. That's how bright this fucking phone was. So of course, me being the fucking 13 year old boy that I am, just started giggling to myself because that is fucking funny, okay? It's literally eight o'clock in the morning and some bitch on the train is looking at fucking dick pics. Basically that's equivalent to me winning the lottery for the day, okay? So I guess she noticed that I was laughing, she turned to me and she started saying something and I'm like, oh fuck, like, I hope it's not a fight. So I take my earphone out. She said, oh, you think this is a big one? Check this one out. And she thumbs through a bunch of dick pics to show me the biggest dick that I've ever seen. This dick was so big that I'm pretty sure it had its own dick. She thumbs through a few more pictures and she goes, that's Aaron, not too bright, but hung like a horse. I just went, all right. She then shows me another picture and it's a guy, very small dick, very small, like a baby carrot. And she goes, that's John. Great personality, but I can't feel it when it's in. I was like, is this bitch for real? This bitch can't be fucking, like this bitch is trolling me, right? Like you trolling me, girl. No, this is what she says to me at eight o'clock in the morning on a fucking Wednesday in a packed train car. Okay? And you know what's even funnier is that nobody like gave it a second thought. Like nobody was like interested in the conversation where they were like, what'd you say, ma'am? Like they were just kind of like, hmm. Oh, that's Tina. She loves showing her dick pics. Like it was so strange. She flips through again and she goes, that's Jeremy. He's just right. And it was like an average size dick, right? So I start laughing. I said, oh, I guess you're Goldie Cox, aren't you? This woman, I thought she almost had a fucking like, I thought I broke her. She could not stop laughing. Unfortunately, I had to get off the next stop, so I couldn't continue on with her and look at the rest of the dick pics that were on her phone. But I said, hey, thank you for the entertainment. And I got off the fucking train. So that's how I started my day. How did you start yours? On today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Fenty Beauty Concealer and the Fenty Beauty Setting Powder. But before I go into my overall thoughts, let me read you a little bit about the products first. Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder. Retails for $32. A super fine weightless loose setting powder in eight sheer shades to perfect and extend makeup wear for a filtered photo ready finish unlock. This silky loose powder works all day to reduce shine and blur the look of pores, fine lines, and imperfections for a hyper smooth filter that won't flash back. Eight versatile shades melt into your unique skin tone, letting you set, perfect, and brighten without caking or settling. Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer. A creamy long wear crease proof liquid concealer with light as air medium to full coverage that brightens under eyes and conceals blemishes and redness. This is a full coverage cured living life to the fullest. The sweat resistant formula comes in groundbreaking range to 50 easy to shop soft matte shades, each designed to pair with your Pro Filter Foundation Shade. Start with your Pro Filter Foundation Shade and adjust from there. So let's talk about the concealer first. First and foremost, there are 50 shades, which is fucking phenomenal, amazing. Thank you, Rihanna, finally. Finally, finally, finally. People are listening, but there are more colors than just five. So with that said, what I thought was a really cool concept about this whole line is that technically the concealer is supposed to match your foundation. So with that said, my foundation shade is 160. So if you are a pale ghosty child like me, 160 is gonna be your girl. And I chose 160 as a concealer. Of course, you can go lighter or darker. So you don't have to necessarily get the same shade, but for all intents and purposes for this review, I'm going to pick the shade that's supposed to be the perfect match for my foundation. So this is actually the second time that I'm wearing the concealer. And it's because the first time that I did it, I had no issue, everything was fine. And then I used this, <sighs> this Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. And it fucked my face right the fuck up. It looked like I was caking and creasing and a melted fucking candle and if you don't believe me, I'll insert a small video here. 
Don't be alarmed. <laughs> okay. Do you do you see this though? Do you do you see this? Do you do you do you see this? How about that? Holy fuck. How old am I? Okay. So initially I really wanted to hate these products because I was like, oh my God, they are fucking creasing the shit out of my skin. I look like I'm dying. I need help. So once I got out of my um, angry low blood sugar phase, I realized, oh, you know what? It's probably the fucking setting spray, which I will talk about that setting spray in a different video because I'm going to go on a fucking rant. With that said, I want to zoom you in to kind of show you what it looks like after a couple hours of wear and uh, no setting spray mishap. Also, heads up, I have a slight irritation over here. Not, has nothing to do with the eyeshadow or anything like that. When I removed all my makeup to do this review again, I got a little too close with the makeup wipe right in the corner of my eyes. So sorry, so that's why it looks like um, a little fucking infected zombie. But I can assure you that everything else is quite well. So with that said, this is what it looks like zoomed in. As you can see, this is truly a medium coverage formula. I only went in with one swipe because I am a medium coverage kind of bitch. I'm not a full coverage bitch. So I would say that for medium coverage, it is pretty good. It really all depends on what you are looking for. If you want full coverage, I think, yes, you can achieve this, except you just got to build this product up. But honestly, I think it looks pretty fucking good though. For a couple of hours, what the fuck was that? So for me, I'm totally fine with the coverage that I received on this application. I think it's really cool. As for the actual application itself, it's a really nice doe foot. Very, very slim little doe foot. Kind of reminds me of like one of the CoverGirl concealers that I used to wear a long, long time ago. I think the formula is on the thicker side. She's thick with two C's. So kind of keep that in mind when you're placing it on and buffing it out. It does dry down a little fast. So I would say work fast, not too fast, but just, you know, don't let it sit on your face. Go have a cup of coffee and then come back and blend it out because I feel like that would be really messy. So definitely keep that in mind when you're using this concealer. You know what's really funny? I'm doing my makeup and I'm recording this and I'm like, maybe I should just leave that part in. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is flying at your head in the <laughs> Yeah, because sometimes there's buckets that come that fly at your head. You know, like, life is dangerous. I've been in many situations where I've had to cover my eyes, face, mouth, nostrils. Some of that time Travis comes in my fucking nostrils. Yes, I do. But overall though, I think while it is thick, it is weightless. Once you kind of blend it out, it doesn't feel like you have any sort of real product on your face, which to me, I'm always a fucking fan of. So I liked it. I think I look really cute today. I look like a fucking toxic cream swamp monster. I'm living for it. You know, is this the best concealer that I've ever tried? Um, I say it's kind of too early to tell if I'm really gonna be sucking this thing's dick, but I think so far so good. I think it's really nice. But of course this is a first impression video, so please do not get this fucking twisted. This is first impression only. I can't really speak to the claims of like, is this super really long lasting or anything like that? Because I haven't really put it to the full test. And for me, a full test is actually going to work and coming home, commuting on the train, getting stuck on the train for at least two hours in a non-air conditioned car while people are screaming that they're going to die. So once that happens, I'll really let you know if I think this is truly worth it. <laughs> but overall, I think this is actually a really nice product and I'm actually really happy that I got it. And I think it's a perfect match for the foundation. So if you are a fan of her foundation, I think you really might like the concealer. Of course, as much as I like the Fenty foundation, it's not my overall favorite. My overall favorite these days is pretty much the L'Oreal Infallible foundation. So I think that's what I want to start playing with tomorrow is kind of pairing this with other foundations. But I definitely think this is a beautiful match for this foundation. And you know what I really also love too is that the packaging is so cute. It's like mommy daughter. You know, like how cute is that, right? It looks identical, except this is glass and this is plastic. That's probably the biggest difference. This is so cute. I love it. So adorable. I definitely think it's worth checking out. So I'll definitely pin a comment down below to let you know how I continue to like it. But so far, so good. And I'm glad that I picked it up. So the next thing I want to talk about is this beautiful, beautiful setting powder. First of all, I'm not really a huge loose setting powder kind of person. It's just, I feel like when I use a lot of loose setting powder, it actually just makes me look old and cakey and gross. And I'm about to die and bitch I'm just trying to get carded for alcohol I'm fucking 33 I want to be carded every time I go into Applebee's to get my fucking Long Island iced tea two first all right and my half price mozzarella sticks I'm just trying to live my best life over here okay I don't need fucking setting powder making me look like I'm an old bitch so that's why I don't really gravitate towards it too much 
I really gravitate. Fuck, I, use, I really do say that word a lot. Anyway, so for me, I like to use setting powders that are in compact form for that very reason. So with that said, I, you know, I was excited to pick this up and honestly, the pictures online do not do this shit justice. This is gorgeous. So if you're a makeup collector like myself, you'll just appreciate just the pure aesthetic of this. Like this is gonna look so beautiful on your vanity forever and ever and ever. It's one of those pieces that are incredibly timeless. And when I look at it, I feel like I've seen this before. Like I feel like I seen my grandmother use something similar to this fucking, you know, 30 years ago. Does that make any sense? Does that resonate with you the same way it does with me or am I crazy? Let me know down below. So what's really nice about the setting powder, it comes in eight different shades. There were two shades that I could pick and one was lavender and one was butter. So when I was kind of playing with both lavender and butter, I felt like lavender had a little bit of a cast and this is supposed to be a no flashback setting powder. So kind of based off of that, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go with butter. And online, butter actually looks like it's more of like a banana powder almost. It looks almost darker. I would open this to kind of show you a little bit more about this powder, but because of my stupid fucking ass shaking this around, a lot of the product is already at the top of it because the little sifter holes are actually a good decent size so unlike that hourglass one you can actually get the product out of the fucking packaging <laughs> So um, I can't open this up <laughs> without it going all over the place. And bitch, I am not trying to lose all this powder on my floor today. No siree. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But it's definitely, I would say more on the tannish side. It's not white, but it's not yellow. It's kind of like a light tan color. Like there's like a beige, well, let's call it beige. Fuck it, beige, it looks beige. When I actually got the powder in my face and up my fucking nose on accident, the first time I did this, it actually has a really, really pretty sweet kind of scent to it. I don't know, it's not like over sweet like Too Faced you know shoving chocolate up your fucking nose it, it just has like a nice sweetness to it but not overly sweet it just it smells good we'll just well let's just say that it smells good <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. So the second time that I used it, I actually took the sponge, dipped it into the powder and lightly pressed it underneath my eye to kind of set that area first. And then I wiped it away. And then I took a large powder brush and kind of just like swirled it around my face. I didn't want to bake anything. I didn't want to do anything too crazy. Just swirled it around and, and kind of let it melt into my skin. And what I like about this particular powder, and it reminds me of like the Inglot powder, the Inglot setting powder, except that has extreme flashback. And that's why I don't really use it that much. Is that it feels like really nice and velvety on my skin and it just looks and feels good. I would say that the setting powder works so well. Like I don't feel any kind of like tackiness. My skin feels nice. I actually want to keep touching my skin, but I know if I keep doing that, I'm going to break out. So I need to stop doing that. This powder is definitely weightless. I don't feel like I have a lot of product on my face. It actually almost reminds me of when I use the Tatcha Rice Enzyme Powder. And after I use it, how soft my skin feels. And if you've ever used that product, then I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. Where it just feels like baby skin. You know what I mean? Like it just feels so nice and soft. I like it. I really do like it. I actually also tested this out to see if this is truly no flashback so I'm gonna insert some photos here of me looking awkward and yeah as you can tell there there is no flashback like the, the shit's really fucking nice I'm really happy with this product of course this video is a first impression so you know obviously I will know a little bit more as the day goes on but I think overall it looks really fucking wonderful and it feels really good on my skin and yeah I'm a fan so with that said I really do invite you to go to Sephora to check all this stuff out I really think it's super nice I don't know so far so good I'm happy with that. Good job, Rihanna. Like, good job, bitch. Of course, I am going to start pairing these two items with other products because much as I really do like the Fenty foundation, I have other foundations on my collection that I really, really do enjoy that are actually my holy grail. So the real true test other than sweating my ass off in the subway is to see how these things pair with the stuff that I always wear. I'll definitely pin a comment down below to let you guys know, or I'll like update this video to let you know how I feel about it when trying these two products with other foundations. Hey, so far so good. I'm loving it. Okay. Anyway, let me know down below if you have this or if you want to get this or if you don't want it or whatever. I'm always curious to know. I'm always curious to hear from you guys. And yeah, I guess that's about it. I want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. It's free. And hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and life. Just, just follow me. Stalk me. I'm okay with that. And I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye.